Hello everyone, welcome to the Geoecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my videos on geography and related topics. So in this session on oceanography, we are going to learn the details of corals, their various types, their formation, the theories and also most importantly the coral bleaching aspect. But before we go ahead, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and do share the videos with others as well. So now, after we have already learned about the various kinds of ocean deposits, its different characteristics, now let's understand about these corals, their deposition and their features. So these corals are also known as Munga in very common Hindi language. And remember, historical and cultural association is also important to learn about corals that we are going to learn in this session. Apart from that, we are going to talk about the relief and formation, various types like fringing reef, barrier reef at all. Then we are going to learn about also coral bleaching, which is important process. And something related to that is Clive Wilkinson report as well. And apart from that, at last of this session, we are going to learn about what is being done to protect these coral reefs. Right? So let's go ahead in this session and learn about the all these various aspects of the corals. So going by history, you see the first time when corals appeared is this Cambrian period that is about 535 million years ago. That is according to geological time scale. Now, if you understand the structure of this coral, if you see the anatomy, the coral reefs are basically what? Remember, they are built by or made up of thousands of these tiny animals which are called coral polyps. And remember, they are related to anemones and jellyfish. So the family here is important that these are not plants, rather they are animals. And the polyp and medusa structure is very famous. Now, what is this polyp and medusa structure? This is what we say is this polyp. And remember, these tentacles, right? This is medusa. So this is what we see this polyp and medusa structure which is very common and that's why they are also sometimes only referred to as coral polyps because polyp is where you have this skeleton which is basically made up of this calcium so calcareous remains right. So polyps are shallow water organisms that is first important point to remember that they are not deep water organisms most of them but they are largely shallow water organisms. Of course there are few deep water as well right which have soft body covered by calcareous skeleton and polyps extract calcium salts from seawater remember they do not produce it in their body rather they have this important mechanism metabolism from where this calcium salt is derived right through this absorption of seawater they derive this calcium salt and remember polyps also live in colonies like human beings right so we are not the only people who live in colonies, but corals also live in colonies and they are fastened to this rocky sea floor. That is important to remember. Now, they have tubular skeletons and they grow upwards, as you can see in the image as well. And collectively, they are also called corals rather than just coral reefs. And remember, when coral polyps die, so they also die as they live. So when they die, they shed their skeleton, which is largely what made up of this calcium salt and again new polyps grow on the same skeleton that is how their life cycle continues now let's elaborate further more now we keep hearing this word coral reef coral reef so what is this reef all about remember this word reef is coming from about 16th century when the world was being navigated by so many people so oceanography was one of the aspects which was being explored and discovered and rediscovered further so remember from scandinavian source the word is rife this rife means ridge in the sea. It means rock ridge under water. So this symbolizes rock structure or hard structure. So when we say coral reef, it is basically representing that hard structure, rock like structure, which is made by the coral deposition, right? So the cycle is repeated for over a million of years leading to accumulation of these layers of corals. And remember in shallow water zone, we have this rock structure created, which is called reef as we have discussed. Right. So these are the coral reefs that we talk. And remember, these layers are at different stages. Right. So one of these stages is when we say this landform, which is formed as coral reef. Remember, it is not initially a reef. Gradually, it develops into a reef structure, which we are going to look here. Right. So coral reefs over a period of time transform and evolve into event coral islands. And the best example we can see is the Lakshadweep. Right. So Lakshadweep Island has evolved over time as a coral island. And there are many other islands in the world which you can take example 
right so the coral occurs in different forms and colors that we know and they are also dependent upon the nature of salts now remember we have already talked about this salinity distribution in the oceans so salinity is one important feature which is related to the formation of coral reef right and small marine plants like algae also deposit calcium carbonate contributing to this coral growth as well so that is important point to remember here now looking back into the history also the historical and cultural aspect of or attribute of these corals now important is to understand how we have been knowing and how we have been living with corals since the ancient times so at the beginning of the first millennium if you see there was a significant trade between india and mediterranean region so you understand this is mediterranean sea and adjoining mediterranean sea what we have is different kingdoms right so this particular civilization civilization remember the indus valley civilization and later mesopotamian civilization as we have discussed in geographical thought evolution there was trade going on between this particular time period so what you observe is that there is a significant trade between this mediterranean region and india in terms of corals so that is important and it was basically a very highly prized substance right because of what reason because of many mysterious and sacred properties which were associated to it right so remember the scholar pliny the elder the roman scholar right who died in the pompeii remember we have also talked about pliny the elder in the volcanism lecture when we talked about mount vesuvius and its eruption on which you have also watched or may not have watched that movie pompeii so where you see pliny the elder remarked that he was a historian and he also talked about this great demand from india so we indians have always been looking towards these corals this munga and it has been one of the important aspects in indian astrology always right so remember the celtic people the ghouls used it for ornamentation of their weapons and helmets now who are these celtic people if you observe this mediterranean region this is this colored area which you find where you have the celtic people the iron age people that is about 1200 before common era this is the time when celtics actually expanded in this particular area and they had this particular usage of these corals so you see this maximum celtic expansion by 275 before common era this is their expanse right so apart from that what you see the romans they had certain connotations of usage of these corals as the branches of coral were hung around children's neck that is important to remember that they use it as a pendant to preserve them from danger from outside also as a cure for the wound right and wound by snakes and scorpions and diagnose diseases by its changing color so that was important usage in that time then there was also a belief in corals potency as a charm that was continued through middle ages and now here is the catch that from ancient the same things continued and came to the middle ages and also this 20th century italy where you see that it was born as a protection from evil eye and now this is one important thing that most of the people can relate that we use certain stones also to protect this evil eye thing right and also it is associated with women as a cure for their infertility in many countries that is important usage now coming to india in indian astrology red coral specially lal munga as we say is associated with planet mars or what we say mangal grah and it is used for pleasing the planet mars and also its impact is being modulated in terms of astrology right and apart from that if you see the yoruba and bini people of west africa the tribals red precious coral remember this red coral jewelry right necklaces wristlets anklets are of high significance and they signify what high social rank remember rich people higher in order in society they wear these important piece of jewelry and that is how corals have been utilized through cultural attributes if you observe and also if you have seen this historical progression of how we have been using corals in various forms now going further if you see coral comes from the sea as we know and it ranges into various colors like black red pink blue and white so what i have done is i have made a table where you see black coral blue red pink white and horn and its particular usage the function has been given so if you want to go into the details you can just 
pause the video here and you can read it that what are its basic functions, how it is used, for what purpose. This is given in this particular slide. So you can read it yourself and understand it's very simple that which kind of coral or which color of coral is utilized for what purpose. Now going to the relief features, we already know that it has various types like fringing reef, barrier reef, at all, right? So three important types of relief features that we are associated with the corals. So now if you observe in this particular image, what you have is this fringing reef, barrier reef, atoll formation and then finally there is the fixed atoll and there is a lagoon over it. So if you observe carefully, the word itself signifies what is this. We are going to discuss in details but before that, let's also understand that which type of coral forms these reef. Not all types of corals are responsible for formation of reef. Remember, there is a coral called hermatypic corals that are those who build reefs, these rock structure, right, using their calcareous deposits. So this is by depositing hard calcareous material for their skeletons and then they form the stony framework of the reef. So this is what we have to remember is hermatypic corals for the formation of coral reef. And remember, those corals, that do not contribute, now here is the catch, which do not contribute are called ahermatypic, non-reef building species as well. So not all the corals build these reefs. So that is one point that you should remember. Now let's elaborate one by one all these features that is fringing reef, barrier reef, atoll formation. Let's discuss that in details. So the first one is fringing reef. Remember the word itself is fringe. So what is this fringe? At the edges. So this word is important to remember, the fringe is at the edge part, right? So fringing reefs are what? They grow directly away from the shore. So if you observe in this particular image or even in this image, this is this particular island, right? And this is on the fringes of this island that these coral depositions happen, right? On the edges, that is important point. The fringing reef runs as a narrow belt that is one to two kilometer wide along these particular islands, right? So coral polyps do not extend outwards because of sudden and large increase in depth. That's why they are just on the fringes. They don't go into the offshore zone. That is important point to remember. And the fringing reef is by far the most common of these three major types of coral reef that we already know. So for example, if you want to see New Hebrides Society Islands of Australia and also southern coast of Florida, you can find this kind of fringing reef available. Then the second kind of reef that we say is the word barrier reef. The word itself is barrier. So what is this barrier? It is a barrier between the mainland and the open ocean, right? That's how it is a barrier. So what happens? The word itself is parallel to a shore, right? So remember, this is a shore and when in between the open ocean and this particular island or mainland, there is this barrier created, right? So if you observe this particular barrier which is created and you have here between the barrier you have a lagoon, right? So this is what we say, this is a reef area, this particular rock ridge, we have a lagoon and then you have a land area. So this is how a particular barrier looks like. Right? And the Great Barrier Reef of Australia, we already know on the northeastern coast of Australia is the best example in the world. The 1200 mile long Great Barrier Reef. This is how it is important to remember the second one that is how it is named as a barrier. And the third type that is very famous is called atolls. So what is this atoll? It is basically a roughly circular or many times it is called annular. Remember the drainage patterns? The annular type of oceanic reef system. Right? And remember, it is circular. It basically means what? It develops on an underlying island, right? That's how on the top it develops as a circle. That's important, right? So if you observe this particular thing, the lagoon is there here, right? Which is surrounding this. And this particular portion is here, right? So what is happening here? This particular slope has been used by the corals to make their colonies. And it looks like this particular thing that is in a circular pattern or in an annular pattern, right? So lagoon depth is almost 80 to 150 meters if you see. So first stage is this atoll formation and later what happens? This atoll which is now subsiding, it is going down. So what happens? This lagoon occupies here and this entire area, this lagoon is covered from all sides by this reef. So this is kind of a circular or annular reef system that we see, right? So this is important. Now, an atoll may have one of the following three forms. It can be either all the 
the three or it can be even one of the three. Remember something called true at all. What is this? A circular reef enclosing a lagoon with no island. Now remember this is called what is a true at all where you have this circular reef all around and in between you have a lagoon. Then an at all surrounding a lagoon with an island. So a lagoon can also have this island in certain places. So this can be also another type of at all right where you have this island here and then you have this lagoon surrounding it so this is another type and then a coral island or at all which is basically an at all reef or at all island itself right so remember what is happening it is built by the erosion and deposition of waves now here is the coastal landform formation process again important that waves are also responsible for eroding and depositing it and that's how these island crowns are also formed it looks like the shape of a crown so that is important here so further going if you look into this images from the aerial shot remember how it looks it is like a circle where you have a lagoon and all the sides you have these ridges of these atolls right so this is important to remember it also resembles like this that underlying you have this island right or this particular volcanic formation on which this is particular reef which is created in between you have a lagoon right so atolls are far more common in pacific than any other ocean this is one point to remember here and some example like fiji and funafuti atoll or ellis island are well known examples right apart from that in indian ocean we have lakshadweep islands which are the most famous example in southern pacific what you see that there is this mid ocean where you have most of the atolls occurrences and examples of this reef type are common in french polynesia carolinian marshall islands micronesia cook islands remember the northern portion of the australia and indian ocean also contains numerous atoll and we already have learnt about this lakshadweep and apart from that you have maldives chagos islands seychelles Cocos Island, all these are part of this atoll formation. So what I suggest is you can go to the world map and mark these places for your exam purpose. Now about the theoretical backup, about the theoretical background of this particular formation. So what you have this, how these have formed? First important point is that they need a base and this base is created by a volcanic hotspot. So remember these volcanic depositions provide this base for the corals to create their colonies. So this is one important point that it starts with a volcanic hotspot where this lava formation leads to these kind of islands which are majorly made of the igneous material and then above that coral reef is built. Right. So the basic coral reef classification that we have learned right now was first proposed by Charles Darwin. That's why the theory of coral reef is credited to Charles Darwin himself. Right. So Darwin theorized the fringing reef formation and he says that it begins to grow near the shorelines of new islands. Right. As an ecological conditions became ideal for hard coral growth. So this is one important thing coming from Charles Darwin as the beginning of these fringing reef formation. Then gradually what happens the island begins to subside so there is a subsidence and the coral was able to keep pace in terms of growth and remain in the place at the surface while it was subsiding so coral made their colonies here itself in the shallow zone while the island subsided this is how you can theorize so first of all there is a volcanic hotspot how this island is found then there is a development of fringing reef alongside it right then gradually what happens a barrier reef is created because there is a lagoon in between this island and the main ocean right so this is a barrier right and then gradual subsidence of this particular island happens as we know and then gradually this atoll is like this a circular or we say annular right so this pattern is observable and this island is finally beneath the surface right so this is how the entire process of atoll formation is described through the theory of charles darwin so this is where you see not the evolution of species but also the evolution of these coral reefs from active volcano to the fringing reef to barrier reef to atoll formation so this is important to understand and in your examination when you're writing an answer this stepwise diagram can be made to explain the process of formations now going to the next segment that is the ideal conditions for coral growth. I have listed the six ideal conditions. Remember first is stable climatic conditions obviously. Then you have perpetually warm waters that is important here. So remember tropical waters 
of an average temperature around 20 degrees C is important. Then shallow water zone because you need sunlight. And remember, corals feed upon the algal remains and small fish. So what you have to have is a shallow water zone, which is actually having abundance of sunlight, right? That is important. Then clear salt water. It basically means that both fresh water and extreme salty condition is not good. So that is important to remember that the salt water should not be extremely salty or not even fresh. It should be somewhere in between, right? Then then you have abundance of plankton as we say. So planktons are the food for these particular corals and that's why it is important to remember that where plankton is found, it is found in the shallow water zone, right? Then little or no pollution and this is where we are worried. This is where we are talking about global climate change and human actions that is leading to the pollution. So remember Pollution is one factor where this is a problem or hazardous for the coral life, right? So marine pollution, which is increasing, is actually catastrophic for these corals. So these are the ideal conditions for coral growth. Now coming to this phenomena of coral bleaching. Now if you observe here this particular diagram, it is very interestingly made that you see where it says life's a bleach, right? And then you die. So bleaching action is important in terms of survival of corals. Why? Remember, when you say bleaching, it is basically meaning that it is losing its color. And why is it losing its color? Now let's understand this. In last two decades, what has happened? The corals around the globe have been experiencing massive bleaching and they're losing their colors. They're turning pale and white because of what reasons? Here are the five major reasons that are listed. You can read it. Well, you can pause the video as well. So changes in seawater temperatures, high solar irradiance, then you have lowering of nutrients and salinity due to too much of surface runoff off or mixing of fresh water near the coast, also overfishing and many times heavy storms or extreme condition apart from the pollution like oil spill, oil drilling, coral trading, etc. happening. So all these processes are adding to the coral bleaching phenomenon. So what happens? Coral can survive without algae for short periods. But remember, if this is extended for a longer period of time, then what happens? The corals enter into the stress zone and gradually they starve and die. So basically what happens, bleaching of coral signifies that they are losing on their planktons, their phytoplanktons, right? They don't have food to eat. That's where the colors are, right? So that is important here to understand that bleaching of coral is actually linked directly to its life. So if you observe this particular image as well, all these colors are bleached here, right? So what happens here? Look at this particular stepwise. So healthy coral is where coral requires algae to survive. It's both coral's primary food source and what makes it colorful. So colorful is not just beauty. Remember, colorful is because of the presence of algae, which is important as a food, right? That is important. Then when you have a stress on the coral, the rising ocean temperatures and overexposure to sunlight stresses the coral and causes algae to abandon it. So what happens? Algae abandons the coral. And that's how it is bleached. So with the algae gone, remember the coral turns white and is most susceptible to the diseases and it dies finally. That is what we say as coral death. That is important to remember. So if you observe as the global extent or global pattern of coral bleaching, now remember the first global event was observed in 1998 and this was during the El Nino condition where we say warm current spreading from Pacific to Indian Ocean as we have already learned in the climatology lecture. So resulting into the death of about 16% of the coral reef around the world. This is the first important event that was actually understood by the world scientists in 1998. So what happened? Within just four years later on, if you see, the world's longest mass coral bleaching event has been recorded. That is about in 2014 to 2017. So it's not very far. Remember, we are talking about just a few years back. In the Great Barrier Reef of Australia, remember that runs for about 4,000 kilometers along northeastern coastline as we know and it is one of the best managed marine protected areas in the world. Among 500 observed reefs, only 4% did not experience bleaching in 2016. It means the bleaching was experienced by more than 90% of the reef in which about 29 to 50% of the reef coral actually were killed. And that is Underwater Earth Report of 2015 saying this. And we have a map here as well, Inside Climate News is the source. So if you observe carefully all these particular areas, this particular area in Atlantic, then you have Indian Ocean, it is widely distributed, and then in this Pacific 
area so all these three major zones of the world all these three major oceans of the world are full of these coral islands coral reef which are being destroyed gradually because of so many reasons that we have listed now finally let's talk about this clive wilkinson report and what does it have to say about the coral so first report on status of coral reef of the world was published in 1998 as we remember so global coral reef monitoring network produces it and it was edited by the scientist called clive wilkinson so that is why it is also known as clive wilkinson's report so since then the report was published regularly till 2008 and remember which is the world area that it includes it includes indian ocean asia australia pacific ocean caribbean atlantic ocean and south america with contributions of various scholars from different countries so that is important to remember that all of these particular areas all the countries are involved in introduction of this particular clive wilkinson report and wilkinson is an editor of this particular so the reports predicted what that almost all the reefs would soon be coming to the threatened stage it means endangered stage that is where you are worried right so this noaa national oceanic and atmospheric administration coral reef watch report 2017 says that end is near and that's why we are worried about this coral bleaching is a worldwide phenomena right so this is important to remember here now there are few observations that were made in clive wilkinson's report that is important and it could be part of your answer writing in future so coral reef are one of the first ecosystem where impacts of global warming and oceanic acidification was observed and remember also it is known as soda water effect where you see calcium loss due to carbonation the chemical reaction right then it says 10% of earth's coral reef have been reduced to a skeleton then the third point is coral reefs die out by 2050 that is a projection so this is which is being talked about in the entire world in environmental scenario that what is happening in the oceans and how it is related to the corals then indian ocean is most severely impacted marine region that's why we see that indian ocean is concerned for this particular important study on corals so more than 70% mortality has been observed where at the coast of kenya maldives andamans lakshadweep islands and this is which is worrisome factor for india as well right so about 75% of the corals have been reported to be dead in seychelles marine park system then you see the fifth point that there have been particular incidences of coral death in particular el nino events but remember due to global warming not just el nino events but it is now including el nino different phases plus the normal phase as well and apart from that the sixth point says human exploitation such as overfishing and other things like loss of the parrot fishes and other grazers which have been far important in climate change for caribbean reef destruction so far remember particular kinds of fishes particular kinds of species if we take them out it destroys the entire ecosystem of corals and that's what is important here and the seventh point is degradation of coral reefs near major centers of population continues with losses of coral over fish populations and probably biodiversity loss and this is what is happening where in this coral triangle if you observe this coral triangle where is it indonesia malaysia and papua new guinea and where is it you observe this particular triangle so this is this triangle which is part of this particular zone where people are concerned and what is happening here you see 76% of the all coral species are in this particular triangle then 6 by 7 of the world's marine turtle species 37% of world's coral reef fish species 130 million people directly dependent upon resources and this particular area is a vulnerable area that's why coral triangle is going to be important and there is a date june 9 for celebration or for awareness creation for this coral triangle day as well that is important to remember here so at last we must understand what is being done to protect these coral reefs so remember there are no standard or strict laws to protect reefs globally and that is what is the most worrisome factor here and what you observe there are many alliances and organizations like global coral reef monitoring network international coral reef initiative icri national oceanic and atmospheric administration noa that we have seen the report says right and in india the coral reefs come under ecologically sensitive areas that is coastal regulation zone crz1 and wildlife protection act that is 1972 where it is falling in terms of legislation in terms of legal perspective and also in terms of the protection aspect if you see so no new activities related to construction underwater blasting use of corals or sand from beaches are permitted under this particular regulation zone and under this particular protection 
act that is important in terms of indian context if you see and remember there is a national committee on wetlands mangroves and coral reefs but there is a problem what is the problem there is no strict policy that stops this harmful activities or pollution on the seaward side and remember this is a fao report 97 saying right so this is what we see what is here immediate reductions in co2 emissions overfishing sedimentation and pollution promoting sustainable tourism environmental education these are certain ways that are supposed to be followed in terms of conserving and also in terms of reducing our impact on the coral reefs and that is the only way where we see that we can save these reefs from vanishing completely by 2050 according to Clive Wilkinson's report. So now when we have discussed in details the formation of these corals, their decaying, their decomposition and also the coral bleaching, in the sessions to come we will be talking more on different topics of oceanography. So stay tuned, stay safe, keep watching.